Hi everyone, I'm Erin Dugan from Fox 56 Sports and welcome to the Office Depot Office Max pregame report. Tonight is the final Bucknell men's basketball game on MyTV WQMY for this season. The Bison welcome in Loyola of Maryland in a key Patriot League contest. Bucknell snapped a four-game losing streak to Colgate Saturday with a convincing 83-69 win. With the victory, the Bison won their 255th regular season game in the Patriot League. Loyola comes into Stoica Pavilion tonight with two Northeastern Pennsylvania products on the roster. Scranton sophomore James Fives is averaging just over seven points per game, while Honesdale freshman Ian Langendorfer sees action in seven minutes per game. The Office Depot Office Max pregame report continues now from Lewisburg. This is Bucknell's men's basketball on MyTV WQMY, presented by Wyoming Seminary and Fairfield Auto Group. A new year brings a new semester, and as the students return here to Bucknell University, so do the Bison, return to Soika Pavilion to continue their Patriot League schedule, taking on the Loyola University Greyhounds tonight. Alongside my partner, former Bucknell point guard Abe Badmus, my name is Joe Basiles. We welcome you back to the Office Depot Office Max pregame show. And as you take a look at the standings in the Patriot League, it's a familiar spot for the Bison. Back in a tie for first place at Boston University, but Abe Loyola has been kind of the surprise team this year, sitting at three and three. Loyola is a strange team. They go and lose to teams like Army and Lafayette at the bottom of the Patriot League, but then they go and beat teams like Lehigh, Boston. Pretty strange. Yeah, they've been playing the upset role all season long, and a lot of it's because of the play of their talented four, Jared Jones. In the day and age of the stretch four, Jared Jones is what I like to call a throwback. This guy averages 15 points and seven rebounds a game, and he does all of his damage from 15 feet it in. And a lot of the guys for the Bison like to work inside as well, including the outstanding center, Nana Fallon. Nana Fallon is becoming one of the best post players in the country. Just look at the stats. He's averaging 15 points a game on 63% field goal shooting. Very impressive. Uh, getting it into the paint is going to be a big key today, but I'll ask you for your Coldwell Banker keys to the game for both teams here, Abe. In order for Loyola to win this game today, they have to make sure they make the Bucknell guards beat them. We all know Bucknell likes to play inside out, play through the big guys, but look for Loyola to double team early and make the Bucknell guards make shots. In order for Bucknell to win the game, Joe, they have to make sure they defend the post without fouling. You will see today, Loyola loves to get to the line and draw fouls. If they do that, they'll come out with the win. All right, we'll get you the starting lineups on the other side of this break. You're watching the Office Depot Office Max pregame show. This is Bucknell's men's basketball on MyTV WQMY, presented by Wyoming Seminary and Fairfield Auto Group. And we welcome you back to the Soika Pavilion Daily Item starting lineup as you take a look at it for the Loyola Greyhounds. That's Jared Jones, Cam Gregory, and Andre Walker, the big three to keep an eye on tonight. Also, Andrew Kosteka and James Fives to round out the five for G.G. Smith's crew. Meanwhile, for the Bucknell Bison, it's Stephen Brown, Kimball McKenzie, Avi Toomer, Zach Thomas, and Nana Fallons. So we have to a quick reset here right off the opening tip as the ball was thrown up. And the official's not quite 100%. Everything ready to go. It'll be Nana Falland jumping center for the Bison. Going up against Cam Gregory, and it's won back by Fallon. And the Bison will take it first. This is Stephen Brown controlling with the ball. He's had himself a nice run here recently in Patriot League play. This is Zach Thomas driving in, up with the shot, no good. And the rebound goes to Jared Jones. Good defense that time for the Greyhounds. Down low, Fallon gets beat by Cam Gregory. 2-0 Loyola. Brown again with it for the Bison, trying to get set up on offense. First touch for Fallon, skip pass for Toomer. Down to the corner for Brown. Fallon in the post for the first time. Try to get a pass to Toomer, cutting along the baseline, and it goes out of bounds. Turnover for the Bison here early. Take a look at the last meeting between these two teams. On February 17th of 2016, the Bison 
came away with an 87-52 victory. Loyola this year has come out and been somewhat of a surprise team in the Patriot League. Is trying to work it inside to Jared Jones. A foul gets called. This is going to go against Zach Thomas. As all time in this series, this is the 15th meeting between these two teams. Bucknell has a 12-2 advantage. Whistle and a holding foul. It's going to go against the Bison here. Kimball McKenzie looking none too pleased with the call. Here right out of the gate. Two quick fouls against the Bison. One against Zach Thomas, one against Kimball McKenzie. Here just over a minute gone in the first half between the Loyola Greyhounds and the Bucknell Bison. We thank you for joining us here tonight. Game three of three we're giving you here on WQMY. This is Jared Jones, far corner. Good pass over to James Fives, left corner three. Doesn't go down, but the rebound goes to the point guard, Stephen Brown. Brown for McKenzie, good pump fake. Try to work it inside for Fallon, and it gets stolen away by Andrew Kosteka. Lead back here, this is Walker. Giving off to Jones, driving in on Fallon. Shot no good, good defense played by Fallon that time. And a loose ball foul. This one will go against the Loyola Greyhounds. goes against Andrew Kosteka. Will be his first personal, first against Loyola. As we will give it to Stephen Brown, taking it across for Bucknell. So here's Avi Toomer, trolling left wing side. Now it's for Brown is Zach Thomas. A lot of time coming off the clock here. Good defense being played by the Greyhounds, Thomas driving in with the right hand. He's able to finish, and the Bison are on the board. And tie things up at two. Great little rub screen there by Nana Fallon on the drive. And now an offensive foul going against the Greyhounds. Goes against Cam Gregory. Take another look here at the Zach Thomas drive. If you, if you saw there a little earlier, Nana Fallon rubbed him there and mm -hmm. uh, enabled Zach Thomas to get a free lane to the basket. Full court press here for Andre Walker up on Stephen Brown, and that's going to be a good matchup here to watch tonight, Abe, as Walker and Brown have been playing some pretty good basketball in Patriot League play. Yeah, both of them coming off their career highs. I'd say that's pretty good. And 21 points in the last game for Stephen Brown. Outside, here's Avi Toomer shooting a three and knocking it down. That's a shot he's going to have to make today. They're definitely going to help off of him. He has to make them pay. Yeah, and for Toomer, he's a guy that's been thrust into the starting lineup for the last couple of games since Nate Jones went down with a foot injury. It's actually in the game against Princeton back towards the end of December. And it seems like with each passing game, Avi Toomer, who just made a great defensive play there, has been getting a little bit more comfortable and has been looking uh, not so much like a freshman anymore out on the floor. Well, defensively, he doesn't play like a freshman, as you can see there, where he's really starting to make strides on the offensive end. They're giving him shots because they have a lot of weapons out here on the floor, and Avi Toomer has, has to prove that he's able to make shots. And how hard is that to be a freshman and then just to be thrust into the starting lineup, maybe even before you're mentally ready to do so, just because, well, there's an injury and you're the next man up, and to kind of have that pressure to perform the way that Toomer has. It's definitely an adjustment with the alley -oop play there. That was a set play. They've run that quite a few times out of, a, out of bounds. Chancellor Bernard had the throwdown. Now quickly the vice in the other way and a whistle and a two-hand foul called against Loyola. Goes against Walker as we take another look. As you see, a lot of Bucknell players standing, standing around and the nice elevation and dunk. What an athletic play by Bernard. And Chancellor Bernard Jr. from Columbia, Maryland. Nate Sestina gets the ball inward to Brown. His crossover move now stopping and giving to Sestina corner. Three. Just off the mark, but Fallon with a nice rebound. Then he got fouled. Good job by Fallon boxing out that time, Abe. Absolutely. He should have no trouble imposing his will today. He is the tallest, biggest player on the floor, and getting rebounds and finishing is all he has to do. We'll take another look here at the foul. It goes against Jared Jones, who picks up his first. Fallon to the line for his first PNC Bank foul shot. It rolls down. A few substitutions here for Gigi Smith and the Loyola Greyhounds. 
James Fives back in the game. Hopefully he can knock down some shots for the Greyhounds. Second on the way from Fallon. Didn't have some pretty spin on it, but it ends up going down nonetheless. So Nana Fallon with his first two points of the game, and it puts Bucknell up by three here early. One of Loyola's favorite sets here. You're going to see a screen for the screener and a handoff for a three, potentially. Outside, this is Kosteka. Had nowhere to go. Instead, he found it cutting James Fives to the basket, and Fives gets fouled. So he'll head to the line and shoot two. You'll see that set probably five to six more times in this half. Loyola is well known with throughout the whole Patriot League for running their sets all the way through and making you defend them for a full 30 seconds each possession. And how hard is that as a defense to know that, look, you have to stay with your assignment throughout the entire time as the first PNC foul shot from James Fives is no good. In a game like this, when you know you got the students back, you want to impress them and show them that you've made some progress from the last time that they saw you, you got to stay disciplined each and every possession because a team like Loyola can make you pay. Fives connects on the second of two. He was able to salvage at least one, and now Sestina picks up his dribble in the backcourt. Lucky to get it across to Avi Toomer. The last time that a lot of these students were here was obviously before the Christmas break, but there's a pretty good representation of the game last Wednesday against Lehigh. It's Brown, no good from the elbow. And Bruce Moore had the ball stripped away, but it comes back to Brown. Tried to get it to Fallon, but it was tipped by Jones. Now Jared Jones running forward with the ball to the basket. Shot no good, but the rebound to Scott, and he gets the tip in. And Well, that might have been an offensive goaltending, but no call. We keep playing forward. Bruce Moore gets fouled and won. What an up and down game. What a play by Bruce Moore on the break, finishing in traffic. That was quite impressive. That brings us to our first time out on the floor. Bison leading 9-7 with 15.49 to go in the first. For over 30 years, Fairfield Auto Group has had a commitment to hometown values. We know how important that is to you. There's a Fairfield dealership near you and with 13 brands and eight locations, you'll see why customers have been loving us for 30 years. Cars cost less at Fairfield Auto Group. Back here out of the timeout alongside Abe Badness, Joe Vasile, as we take a look here at our marquee matchup, Abe, and we touched on it a little bit already. It's the two point guards in today's game, dueling number twos, Andre Walker for Loyola and Stephen Brown for Bucknell. Yeah, two different styles of play. Stephen Brown's a really, really quick guard, likes to get in the lane. They will go under on his ball screens today, but they won't do that for Andre Walker. This guy knocked down nine three-pointers in his last game on Monday. Yeah, that was a career high for him. Also in that, eclipsed 1,000 points on his career as a junior from Westbury, New York. Is now out of the timeout, Bruce Moore will head to the free throw line to try and complete a three-point play. After he was able to make a basket while drawing a foul. Moore back for a PNC foul shot, and he knocks it down. And the freshman from Owings Mills has three points. But now back up by three. Walker passes off to Gavon Scott. And we were talking about some of the play of Loyola, including the way that they like to run their set offense. This goes down to Jones inside, as a lot of their plays are designed to do just that. Work it into the post for Jones or Cam Gregory and get the points that way, as Nate Sestino gets the bucket for Bucknell. Gigi Smith feels that his best advantage is through his big men. Mm -hmm. S with senior play from Jared Jones and a emerging player like Cam Gregory, I see why he's playing through them. But he also has a really good striker in Andre Walker. And it's always good when you can have that guy to kind of neutralize things. As James Fives gets fouled in the perimeter by Stephen Brown. Because, and you see this on the Bucknell side of things too, with Nana Fallon helping to open up some shots on the outside. When you've got those dominant guys down low, you start to draw the defense back in that way. That's when you can kick it out to an Andre Walker who can step out and make a big shot. It's always easier playing inside out than outside in. You have an advantage who can uh, score at 63% from the field on a regular basis. That always makes things easier for the guards when they're lining up three-point shots wide open. 
Texas, Chuck Champion with the ball for Loyola, just checked in. Out there with Walker, Fives, Barnard, and Kevon Scott. It's a whistle and another foul getting it called against Nate Sestina, who's gonna pick up his second personal already. Nate Sestina just can't find time on the floor. This young man is emerging into one of the better players that's come, that comes off the bench in the Patriot League, but his biggest issue is to staying on the floor. And we saw him a couple of games ago against Holy Cross, going five for five from the floor, getting a career high uh, in points, but uh, like you said, the foul trouble has been a problem from time to time for Sestina. Not only this season, but throughout his two-year career. This is Fives, the Scranton native, controlling outside. Nearly traveling with the ball, but just passing off now. Walker for three, no good. And the rebound goes to DJ McClay. Those are the exact type of shots that you want to see Andre Walker take. Contested three-point shots. It's a really tough shot. This is Matt O'Reilly in the corner, trying to get inside for Thomas. And the pass goes off his hands and out of bounds over toward the Soika Psychos. Seems like Bucknell just hasn't been able to be as crisp as they'd like offensively. Yeah, the pace of the game really isn't at where they want it. I think Coach Davis would rather see it be slowed down just a little bit, work it inside, play through Nana Fallon and guys like that. But right now, it's just too frenetic for them. Steven Brown off the floor. Okay, it's gonna be Kimball McKenzie playing that point guard role, perhaps as part of the effort to try and slow things down a little bit. Get the lightning fast Brown off for a quick breather and maybe go into more of your set half court offense. Absolutely, Joe. Lavelle Provo moving around now, champion with a drive. He dishes off to Kavon Scott, who's able to finish, and Scott's got four. You're going to see a heavy dose of driving today from every single player on Loyola. McKenzie tries to get it into McClay and gets tipped and out of bounds. They'll say last touch by Loyola. And Gigi Smith and his staff not too pleased about that call. As you can see, they are packing in the paint defensively. Mm -hmm. They are daring the Bison to shoot from the perimeter. They are not going to get beat on the interior today. Into McKenzie in the corner. The ball screen for Thomas. Now a leaner, no good. And the rebound to Scott is, well, like you're saying, just not allowing the Bison to work anything inward really all day. And when they have gotten it in, They've done a job of fouling and forcing the Bison to go to the free throw line. That's right, Joe. What you're going to see here is a man-to-man -man defense. Look for Loyola to try to get in the paint once again and make the Bison pay. Kick out here for Champion. He tried to drive, and now Navelle Provo. This is Ian Langendorfer with the floater, and he got fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot, too. Four different players on that possession drove, caught the ball, drove it to the middle to try to draw the defense. This is what they want to do. If you look at the stats, they don't shoot many threes. Mm -hmm. There's only one guy on this team that's made more than about 40 threes in this season. This is their, this is their calling card. Loyola loves to drive. First PNC Bank foul shot from Ian Langendorfer is good. Langendorfer, a freshman out of Honesdale, Pennsylvania. It's ben Robinson checks in. Robertson, freshman for the Bison. The second is good as well. Just a one-point lead now for Bucknell. So McKenzie gets back to running the point. It's, it's been kind of a one-man press here, whether it was Walker or now Navelle Provo working. Inside here is Thomas. Driving in, McKenzie able to get the bucket, and that was a tough one. He went up, got a little bit of contact, and kind of, Made a nice aerial adjustment to get that basket to fall. That's a product of getting in the weight room. He took that contact, finished, and uh, now he's trying to get a stop on the defensive end. Good work to Bensley, forcing a kick out here for Langendorfer for three. No good, rebound comes out long, and it's thrown off of DJ McClay and out of bounds. Good heads up play that time by Kevon Scott. Nate Davis really digging into his lineup here getting John Azanero in the game. Uh, a lot of uh, players out here that usually don't get a lot of time throughout the season. Azanero out, has got off to an okay start of the season, but it's really cooled off as of late in terms of his shooting touch. But he's got some ability, just hasn't kind of manifested itself this season. 
And I'm sure for him it's tough as a senior trying to break into the lineup here. Let's see what kind of impression he can make on the game. There's an illegal screen call against Loyola. Turnover for them is lead that foul ended up going against Gregory, but pardon me, it's against Bernard. Regardless, the turnover for Loyola is, well, again, the Bison have had some opportunities, and now it's time for them to try and cash in on that turnover from Loyola. Absolutely, just smart possessions. A lot of turnovers that are unforced in this uh, first half. Let's see what kind of offense Bucknell can produce here. Kenzie dribbles off his leg and out of bounds. And I'm going to tell you, it's part that, and it's also part some good defense being played by Loyola. Absolutely. Loyola believes that if they pressure their guards and, and pack the paint, they have a good chance of winning. And so far, that formula is working. Mm -hmm. So Stephen Brown now checking back in for the Bison. Out there with Azanero, Thomas, and Nana Fowland, along with Ben Robertson. This is Andre Walker driving in and losing the ball, and it goes out. And that time it was Fowland working on Walker, causing the turnover and bringing us to a timeout on the floor. 14-11, Bucknell on top, 11.53 left to go in the first. Wyoming Seminary was voted the number one private school in Northeastern Pennsylvania for grades toddler to 12 and postgraduate. SEM has it all, challenging academics, diverse arts, championship athletics, activities for every interest, and has both local and boarding students from all over the world. Call or visit today. Take a look at, uh, for the Greyhounds, some local connections from James Fives and Ian Langendorfer. We've talked about the both of them. Fives, of course, a sophomore out of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Went to Scranton Prep, also the Hill School. And Ian Langendorfer, freshman out of Honesdale High School, playing here in Lewisburg. Back uh, close to their home territories. Brown makes a nice move, taking it across for the Bison. He's going to have to beat that press on him himself all game today. Brown trying to dribble around. Now Thomas inside for Fallon on the floor once. Good turnaround. And there's the bucket for Nana Fallon. Catching and scoring quick is the key. He knows he's going to get double teamed. He has to attack as soon as the ball hits his hands. That's now four points for Nana Fallon tonight. Came into this game eight shy of a thousand on his career. Bell Provo from the high post for the shot. No good. Fallon tips the rebound around, and it comes back out to Provo. Good job chasing down the loose ball for Loyola and staying with it. You know you're going to get another set run all the way through here by Loyola. Comes over to Walker, guarded by Azanero. Good hard screen from Scott. Jones with a drive in. Kick out to Provo for three. Got it. It's a freshman that can definitely knock down jump shots. Actually, I believe he's a sophomore, excuse me. But he can definitely knock down jump shots. He's uh, hit a little bit of a cold spell lately, but he's like he knocked down one. Steven Brown answers right back, though, and right on top. How about that for Brown? We saw him catch fire at the end of the Princeton game. As now a carry is called against Walker, and another turnover for Loyola. And really, Abe, in this first half, we've seen turnovers be a big factor. But take a look at this three from Brown. Yeah, they're challenging him to shoot the ball. They know that he can get by anybody on this team. They're going to challenge him to make that shot over and over, and Stephen Brown's pretty confident. Yeah, certainly, Brown averaging over 11 points per game in conference action. He's kind of raised his season average up a little bit, but also still doing a good job at distributing the ball as well right at the conference lead in terms of assists per game. Absolutely, Joe. I think he really got his confidence at the Vanderbilt game, and he's getting everybody else involved here, just like you said there. There's Avi Toomer for three, his second of the game on the assist from Stephen Brown. Tyson starting to go on a little bit of a run. They work it in, goes off the head of Toomer, and then out of bounds. It'll stay with Loyola. 
How about the defensive effort of Avi Toomer? He was he guarded the, guarded the ball there, closed out, recovered, and even had a deflection on the same play. And take another look at that Toomer three. Good high release on it. You can see the defensive action is a product of him knocking down shots. That just energizes you when you make a shot like that and you know you've been working on it. This guy is putting all his effort out on the floor right now. And you always love to see that, especially from a freshman, when you get an opportunity to go and make the most of it, and that's what Toomer's done, and to an extent, Bruce Moore as well. Absolutely. These two freshmen are going to be impact players for a while. They're getting great experience here early on in their career. This is Moore. Moore drove in, and there was a foul called down away from the ball. And you see a guy like Bruce Moore who's so versatile. You can play him at the three. You can play him at the four. He can drive it. We saw him working on his game earlier before the game today. This young man is trying to put in the work to be an impact player for years to come. A yeah, one and one here for Nana Fallon. Goes back to the line, went two for two in his first trip. And he's no good on the first end of the one and one, so he doesn't get a chance at a second PNC Bank foul shot. Instead, Loyola will take it the other way. Driving in, Walker has his shot rejected by Fallon. And then McKenzie gets fouled in transition by Walker, and that looked like kind of a frustration foul that time. Absolutely. What a great job by by the defense, by the Bucknell Bison, defending without fouling here. You see him with the drive, Nana Fallon making no physical contact, just getting his hand up high and blocking that ball. Nana Fallon, one of the best already, and again, just a junior in Bucknell history at blocking shots. He was block number 117 on his career, which is only three away from him moving into fourth place. So he has uh, a while to go to catch up to Mike Butts and Mike Mascala, who are both over 270 on their careers. Second from McKenzie is good, so he knocks down both PNC Bank foul shots to put the Bison up by 10. It's an 8-0 run here for Bucknell. Really good stretch here for the Bison. Let's see if they can continue to stretch this lead out before the half. Fallon with a tip and can't chase the ball down before it ends up going out of bounds, but still a good defensive play to get that deflection and force Loyola to set back up. I don't know what Coach Davis said to these guys in that last time out, but the effort level has definitely increased since then. You see a big guy like Nana Fallon stepping out into a passing lane and deflecting the ball, you know they want to win today. Nick Gorski checks into the game for Loyola, big number one, 6'9", 242 pounds. It's Matt Staubey passed off to Jones and then tried to get a pass back over to Staubey. And uh, nearly got thrown into our laps here, Abe. It's going to be another turnover for Loyola. I promise you, if I would have caught that, I would have shot it. I, pro I don't know if I would have made it, but I definitely would have shot it. Even with a bad leg? <laughs> Even with a bad leg. Look now up 10. Is, is like you said, Nate Davis, whatever that message was in the last time out, certainly got the Bison playing well. Brown goes in, dumps off to Fallon. Now back up top, and that inside-out basketball. Step back for Brown. Oh, he's feeling it. That is a matchup Stephen Brown will take every day of the week. He knows he's going to get an opportunity to score, and he take advantage of it on that last play. And a 30-second timeout taken by Loyola as we take another look. You can tell he wanted to drive, but he had so much space, he took the step back, a quick shot, and the splash. That was really pretty that time, and now an 11-0 run for the Bucknell Bison as you take a look there at head coach Nathan Davis talking over things with his, uh, his crew out on the floor. And I gotta tell you, he's gotta be pleased with the way that they've been playing over the last few minutes. Certainly we know that after the loss here last Wednesday against Lehigh, he was not very happy with the way that the team played, but they certainly responded well Saturday against Colgate and now off to a good start here against Loyola tonight. I think all of Lycoming County heard his message <laughs> after that Lehigh game. Everyone has responded, including the seniors on this team, especially the upperclassmen who have been putting the time in to make sure that this, this season is a memorable one. Siavi Toomer with six points so far. Tied with Brown for the team lead in points here with about eight and a half minutes to go in the first. Whistle and a foul. It's going to get called against Nana Fowland. And then he comes over and, or pardon me, that was Bruce against Moore. Bruce Moore. Pardon me. He came over and gave the referee, I think it was a, I would hope that it was a joking shove just to say, hey, no, this is all I did. You can't kind of a thing, but that's that's a dangerous move. 
Yeah, you can't sweet talk a ref as a freshman. Just, just not, not possible. It'll be a one and one coming up here for James Fives. After the foul, that was number seven on the Bison here in the first half. Loyola as a team has committed eight. So both teams in the bonus here with eight and a half minutes to go. Shot was no good, but Loyola grabbed the rebound. That was Austin Harriet, a freshman, who took it down. This is Harriet with it again. He loses the ball after running into Toomer, and he comes up with a steal. Now McKenzie driving in with the basket, not no good. And Loyola with the rebound. They've got some numbers. This is Kosteka with the one-handed jam. Andrew Kosteka, freshman out of Germantown, Maryland, with the one-handed dunk. Now you're seeing a zone here by Loyola. They're trying to slow down Bucknell because they know they've been scoring at ease. Good ball reversal for Toomer. Shot was no good from three. The rebound went to Chuck Champion. Champion's been a strong option for Loyola, coming off the bench as a good guard. Splitting time at point guard with Andre Walker. Kostecka gets it back to Champion. And there's Toomer to knock the ball free. Now Brown driving forward, goes up, and a nice chop by Brown to kind of reverse course with the up and under and get it to go. My MVP so far is Avi Toomer. This guy has created every single opportunity for his team to get fast break points today. His activity on the defensive end is unparalleled right now. Yeah, and really the box score doesn't even tell the story for Toomer today. Six points, two steals, but he's been so much better than even that. Ahead for McKenzie to the basket. Kimball McKenzie with six. And Bucknell up by 15. The breaking Bison here getting early stops. Steals and converting with easy layups. Bison continuing to go on this roll as Harriet gets it over to Kosteka. Driving in, pass to the baseline, champion up top for fives. Now it's Nick Gorski. The spin move, pass out for fives, left corner, four on the shot clock as they get it into Harriet. Pass to champion, and that's going to be a 30 second violation on Loyola as champion didn't get out of his hands in time. I'm telling you, Joe, this is one of the best defensive efforts I have ever seen the Bison play. 31-16 with 6.34, timeout on the floor. Back with more after this. In addition to all the choices we offer you, buying a new or used vehicle from one of our dealerships affords you other amazing benefits too. When you buy a car from Fairfield Auto Group, you get the Fairfield Advantage. Back here at Soika Pavilion, a bad miss Joe Basile, 31-16, Bucknell on top as you take a look at their records in Patriot League contests this year. Four up, the loss here at home to Lehigh, but then a strong rebound on Saturday against Colgate, Abe. Yeah, it was a little bit of a dis uh, let down this last game against Lehigh. Uh, we all know the reaction Coach Davis had, but they picked things back up, and they're getting back into their winning ways. See Stephen Brown sitting on the bench out of the timeout. Eight points, two rebounds, four assists so far. As we have a whistle and a... Have to reset up the clock as I think a second had ticked off and they got to try and reset everything as the shot clock never got going. So we'll reset here out of the timeout as the Bison currently on a 17 to four run over the Greyhounds. And well, Abe, it's, it's been a lot because of on the offensive side, knocking down some shots and finally being able to get it inside, but also some very strong defense. Yeah, the term deflections is what I really want to bring up. You don't really see it in the stat sheet but a deflection is when you get your hand or body in the, in the way of the passing lane, and that also creates opportunities for you to score and steal opportunities. I can guarantee you every coach and team in the country tracks deflections. Outside, Jared Jones up fake to three. Stim Hill drive in, kick out to Kosteka for three, and Andrew Kosteka connects. He's got five. It's a nice looking freshman. Can knock down the jump shot, also drives it a little. Very promising future for him. Zach Thomas with the turnaround goes down. And Thomas now with four. There's a whistle here from the official. And I think a foul got called. 
You see them feeding Zach Thomas Damn. here, getting him involved pretty early. And uh, with a nice left shoulder finish. And foul went against DJ McClay on a loose ball. So five and a half to go, Loyola takes it. Trailing by 14. And, and to get back to the deflections point you were making, Abe, when you're an offensive team and the team you're going up against is just getting deflection after deflection after deflection on your passes, does that make you a lot more hesitant or kind of make you second guess yourself when you're on offense? Absolutely. It makes you test your passes, double think your passes, and uh, eventually you see turnovers as a result of it. A turnover for the Bison as DJ McClay ended up traveling with the ball. Take another look here. Is, oh, he's getting hacked every which way, but ended up kind of going up there and picking up a travel. Not sure about that call there. Loyola will take it. Again, this is Walker running the point. Jones down low, good pass, and wide open was Kevon Scott for the two-handed dunk. The freshman's got six. Loyola taking advantage of the early help by DJ McClay here on the, sh on the hedge, and a quick turnaround for the pass into a nice little dunk. Kenzie outside for Matt O'Reilly. Now it's McClay. Oh, and a beautiful pass from McClay to Thomas, who got the bucket. And the foul, I believe, they called it and gave the count the bucket. Thing, DJ, DJ McClay learning from his last possession, just yeah. get the ball to Zach Thomas, right? Get it to Thomas. Bucknell up by 14 with four and a half to go. What you're seeing here is a ball screen offense that Loyola likes to run. Going to see it a lot today. Walker out here for Jones. Jones for three, way too strong, and Thomas grabs the rebound. He's going to look to run himself. Finds Toomer, lost the ball, cut into the basket, and then he ended up uh, picking up an offensive foul. Maybe a little too frenetic of a pace there on that fast break. I'd expect a guy like Zach Thomas to pull that ball in and get a better possession next time. Take a look at G.G. Smith, the head coach of the Loyola Greyhounds, son of legendary coach Tubby Smith. He's been, I believe he's either closing in or just over 600 wins, but despite that pedigree, G.G. has made a name for himself on his own merit. Tom had been an assistant for many years here at Loyola before taking over as the head coach in 2013. He's got this program playing some pretty good basketball this season. But well, tonight, Bison defense has been getting the better hand. Yeah, he has a, a, a young group, a lot of a lot of freshmen that are playing uh, early on in their careers, mm -hmm. and then he has a nice blend of upperclassmen too, just toying around with the lineup here and there. And I think he's finally found something in that lineup that he was using against Boston. Kimball McKenzie's got the bucket and eight points, and it's up up to a 16-point lead again for Bucknell. Yeah, on this Loyola roster, nine freshmen or sophomores out of 15. And there's Toomer with a steal, and Avi Toomer with two hands. His effort is unmatched right now. He is in every passing lane. This guy's defensive effort is one of the best I've seen in a long time. Showing off in front of the Soika crowd. Making a name for himself is Avi Toomer. Here's Walker with the kick. Ball stripped by Toomer down to the floor, but it comes back to Loyola. And then Kevon Scott got fouled as he went up for a shot. That brings us to another timeout of the floor. Bucknell up 39-23 on the Loyola Greyhounds. Welcome back to Soika Pavilion, everyone. Thank you for watching men's basketball tonight on My TV WQMY. We're going to get right into tonight's player profile as the Bucknell student section has some fun behind me tonight. We're going to take a look at sophomore Matt O'Reilly. He's excelling both on and off the court. He was named to the 2016 Patriot League honor roll and brains and athleticism while they run in the family. His father actually played at Princeton. But the most interesting thing about Matt is his shot percentage. Out of 112 shots he's taken, 107 have been three-pointers. So, Joe, what can I say? He likes the perimeter. Hey, he certainly does, Aaron. We've already seen him 
take a three tonight. Unfortunately for him, didn't go down, but in terms of the Bison, well, that is kind of small change. They're up 39 to 23 as Loyola is still in their huddle coming out of the timeout. And for Matt O'Reilly, a guy who is, again, a three-point specialist at heart, but they start to work on developing kind of the rest of his game to have a larger role on the team. Sure, I mean, I'm sure when he was in college, he probably never had to step inside the sure. three-point line. But when you have guys who scout you day in and day out, they're gonna take away your strengths. Matt O'Reilly's been working with shooters who are uh, on the staff like John Griffin mm -hmm. and uh, trying to develop his game and put some more versatility to it. So Kevon Scott to the free throw line to try and complete a three-point play, and he does. Freshman coming off the bench. It's nine points and is the leading scorer for the Greyhounds. See a, little see a little zone press here to slow the Bison down. Good move by G.G. Smith. Probably going to drop back into his zone and see if they can ride this zone out to the end of the half. Yeah, Bucknell 15 of 21 from the floor. Loyola just 9 of 23, as you see on the bottom of your screen. This is Fallon with the spin move inside, and Fallon's got six. Keep feeding the beast. Mm -hmm. Nana Fallon is so dominant inside, there is no one who can stop him when he catches the ball one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's that hook shot that he just loves to utilize. As the ball gets knocked away by Zach Thomas and then out of bounds. It'll stay with Loyola. 19 left on the shot clock. Fallon just such a dominant force inside for Bucknell all season, and it seems like he's just gotten better and better with each passing game. You're absolutely right. He didn't pick, he started the game pretty late in his life. Didn't play until he was a teenager, but uh, as he's progressed in his life and is playing more and more, he's starting to develop some post moves, and obviously his jump shot is getting better too. Thomas for three, he got it. Zach Thomas has nine points for the Bison. As Fallon and Thomas really getting going here in the second half of the first half. That's the key, Joe. You got to feed the guys down low and uh, let your bigs take you to the promised land. It's the Bison by 20. Jones driving in, shot blocked by Fallon. How about that on the defensive end for Nana Fallon, his second of the night? That's always been the strength of his. He's a freak athlete and he protects the basket like no other. Stephen Brown, touch pass from McKenzie into Fallon with 10. Left on the shot clock, put it on the floor once, turn around, shot off the window, it's good. And that is the 1,000th point in the career of Nana Fallon and appropriate, a hook shot off the glass. Unbelievable patience on that play. He waited and waited, looked around, surveyed the floor, and he got to his patented, jump, his patented hook shot on his left shoulder. Walker dumps in for Jones and then the other way, shot no good. And a foul called. Looks like Zach Thomas might have gotten poked up top. As you take a look there, Nana Fallon, the 40th Bucknell player to score 1,000 points in his career. And I believe he is also the, pardon me, the 19th to do so as a junior. As we have a 30-second timeout taken down on the floor here before the foul shot's coming up. But Fallon has just been so good throughout his entire career. But we'll take a second and here tell you that Wyoming Seminary was voted the number one private school in Northeastern Pennsylvania for grades toddler through 12 and postgraduate. Sem has it all, challenging academics, diverse arts, championship athletics, activities for every interest, and has both local and boarding students from all over the world. Call or visit today. Right now, the announcement being made here in Soika Pavilion for Nana Fallon scoring his 1,000th point. And uh, the fans all rising up and giving Fallon a well-deserved standing ovation, and you see the big smile on his face. Quite an amazing feat to score 1,000 points in less than three years. Uh, this young man has put the work in summer after summer, and it is paying dividends, especially this season. Now the crowd has settled down, the free throw line. First is no good from Jones. He's got two foul shots as Loyola in the double bonus here. Oh, he's also fouled shooting, so either way it will be a moot point. I had the luxury of playing with another dominant big man in my playing days with, by the guy, with a guy by the name of Chris McNaughton. 
having a, a, a tool like that who can just score for you down low at such a high clip, uh, it's such an advantage to have. Foul called is Steven Brown, who's trying to work his way in, and that'll be foul number nine against the Greyhounds here in the first half. So Brown coming up for a couple of foul shots. And, and talk about, obviously, playing there with Chris McNaughton for a while and, and not a foul. Under, how do you feel they are similar and a little bit different in terms of the way that they play? Well, the first thing is they both like to win. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, and when you like to win, you got to determine what do I have to do in order to make my team win day in and day out. And uh, a guy like Chris, who came with a lot of skills, worked on his game, especially in the weight room. He put a lot of weight on, lifted a lot of weights. The skill was always there. Now, for a guy like Nana Fallon, it's probably the, the ad adverse. He probably had a lot of the physical ability, mm -hmm. but worked on the skill. And you can see each year he's improved one aspect of his game immensely. Four second, di second differential shot clock to game clock as Champion throws up a floater. He knocks it down. Now Bucknell trying to inbound here quickly. Brown will have to throw up a heave from half court at the buzzer. No good. Nearly did go down, but the score here at halftime is the Bucknell Bison 46 and the Loyola Greyhound 26. And the first half of basketball that probably couldn't have gone any better for the Bison if Nate Davis drew it up himself. We'll be back in the Office Depot, Office Max halftime show right after this, where Aaron Dugan will be joined by a couple of special guests. You're watching Bucknell Basketball on my TV. <laughs> Welcome to the Office Depot Office Max Halftime Show. It's a Patriot League battle tonight. Bucknell dominating Loyola, Maryland, 46-26 at the half. I'm Aaron Dugan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have a special guest with us now, John Hart, the Director of Athletics here at Bucknell University. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Aaron, and welcome to Bucknell and Soika Pavilion. So speaking of Soika Pavilion, when I look around and I see all these President Cup banners, what does that mean? Tell me about that. Well, that's a real point of pride here at Bucknell in that during the course of the 30-year existence of the Patriot League, Bucknell has dominated President's Cup championships, and that's a symbol of overall sports excellence in all of our varsity programs. We've won, I believe, 11 of the last 15 President's Cups, so it's a real point of pride here at Bucknell. Absolutely, that's fantastic. So when you talk about your fan base, I know you have a big fan base in central Pennsylvania. You're trying to branch out a little bit to northeastern Pennsylvania. Why is that? Well, we've done a great job of establishing ourselves as one of the premier programs here in the state of Pennsylvania, particularly in central PA, where crowds like tonight are the norm, not the exception. We regularly fill up Soika Pavilion. But we also have naturally looked to the northeast as an as extension of our, of our market, if you will. But we feel we've been underrepresented and underexposed in that area. So nights like tonight are extremely important for us to build on our brand and reach out to an area of the state that's very important to us. So you see a lot of student athletes come through this school. What is the type of student athlete that you're looking for here at Bucknell? Well, quite simply put, the best and the brightest. We're looking for the folks who achieve both in the classroom and on the playing fields. And we've done an outstanding job of being able to capture those student athletes here at Bucknell. If you had to name maybe one thing that makes this university so special, what would you say? I think it's our true commitment to the scholar-athlete uh, concept. We nationally lead the country in graduation rates and are among the leaders in producing academic All-Americans each and every year, and I think that surprises a lot of people. When you speak of scholar-athletes, we'll actually be talking to one coming up. Kendall Ham, what can you say about her? Uh, outstanding, great example of uh, Buck, the caliber of Bucknell student-athletes. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Aaron. All right, we'll be right back with a special guest. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Office Depot, Office Max Halftime Show. Bucknell up 46 to 26 over Loyola, Maryland. I'm very excited to join, have a special guest with me right now. This is Kendall Ham. Now, she just had a huge honor bestowed upon her, the first ever All-American in women's soccer. How awesome is that? How proud are you? I'm, it's very exciting. I was um, very honored to get the award, and I think it um, reflects very nicely on our program and where we are right now and where we're headed. You actually just came back from Los Angeles where you received a pretty big award. Tell me about that. Oh, that was an awesome experience. So I went out there, um, I think it was on Saturday. It was the uh, NSCAA convention and um, there was a luncheon 
and it was actually a really cool experience because all the All-Americans were honored there. Um, so yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds great. So you led your team to a Patriot League title and a berth into the NCAA playoffs. What was that experience like? Oh, that was really exciting. So the final game we won in overtime at home, so it was like in front of um, all, like our home crowd, so it was really exciting. It's something we've been working for for the past, uh, I'm a junior for the past three years. And it was pretty cool because we beat Boston, who we lost actually to last year with a minute left. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. So just as a junior, you still have a year left. What would you like to accomplish? Um, we definitely want to like try to uh, win again next year and yeah, to see what, where we can keep our program going. And lastly, Kendall, what do you like so much about being a student athlete here at Bucknell? Um, I love how the the balance between academics and athletics. And it's also pretty cool because it's a pretty small school. So most, uh, there's I think one out of every eight people here are um, athletes. So it's pretty cool um, experiencing that. Awesome, well thanks so much for stopping to chat with us. Thank you. All right, stay with us when we come right back. We're gonna have some stats and highlights from the first half. You're watching College Basketball on my TV, WQMY. And we'll welcome you back in the Office Depot, Office Max Halftime Report alongside former Bucknell point guard Abe Badness. I'm Joe Basile. This will get you a look here at some of the big highlights from an exciting first half of basketball here in just a second as the Bison lead it 46-26 over the Loyola Greyhounds and what was really characterized by swarming defense by the Bison in the first half, Abe. The activity, the effort level was unmatched. And it all really started with a guy like, with a freshman, Avi Toomer. His activity, the deflections that he made, his help and recover uh, really sparked the defense and got him off to a huge lead in the first half. Yeah, we were talking right out of the gate about how Tumor has gotten a lot more comfortable as the season has gone along and as he's continued to start games in Nate Jones's absence. And it seems like tonight is just another step forward for the young freshman. Absolutely, his development has increased incrementally each game. And I think with a game like this where he's making shots, uh, it only energizes him on the defensive end, and you're seeing it pay dividends out here on the floor. Yeah, we saw him with a couple of big threes in that first half, also a steal that he finished off with a big dunk, as we'll take a look here at some of the highlights from that first half. For the Bison, right out of the gate, it was Zach Thomas setting the tone early, and then there's Tumor knocking down a three. Yeah, that three really got him started, energized him on the defensive end, and he really took advantage of, of every opportunity he had thereafter. Also, Kimball McKenzie did a good job in that first half, finished with eight points. Nana Fowland picked up his thousandth career point in the first half as well, a big milestone for the junior. And then how about Stephen Brown when he just caught fire from outside? Yeah, Stephen Brown knew he was gonna have a game where there was no one that could stay in front of him. They dared him to shoot, and you better believe he's been working on his jump shot. He took those opportunities gladly and knocked down some timely threes in the first half. And Loyola, every once in a while would get something where you kind of looked at it and went, okay, maybe that's what starts to get them some momentum going, but as soon as you'd have a play like that one right there, there was a big steal and a finish from Avi Toomer on the other end, or a bucket from Fallon, or just something that would go wrong for Loyola and help out the Bison to open up this 20-point lead at halftime. Absolutely, when you have a defensive effort like this, it's really, really hard to get going uh, as, as the opposing team. And what Bucknell did, was they turned the notch up at that 12 minute mark. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Coach Davis said, probably a lot of what he said after that Lehigh game, mm -hmm. but uh, they definitely responded and really blew this game open. Absolutely, went on a 17-4 run right out of that. So now we take a look at some of the halftime stats. You see the Bison shooting the lights out, quite frankly, in that first half, 18 to 25 and five of nine from three. You compare that to Loyola, 10 to 26 from the floor and just two of nine from deep in the first half. And the turnovers is another big one, because you remember those first eight minutes or so, Bucknell turned the ball over six times through the final 12 minutes of that first half, only two more turnovers, and that coincided with the great run that they were able to go on. Absolutely. The, it, it really had a lot to do with just slowing down, getting the ball inside, and then everyone playing through the big guys. And what you saw is they, they spread the wealth equally throughout that first half. We have about four or five guys with eight to nine points anywhere in between there. Uh, this, is a, this is a balanced attack by the Bison, and this is the kind of basketball that you're gonna need to see going through the Patriot League. It's really hard to scout when you got four or five guys getting in double figures. Know how much you're spending on what and each and every month. 
Know you're on track with your bills and upcoming payments, and know your passions are a priority with PNC Virtual Wallet. Get all the details at pnc.com slash virtual wallet, PNC Bank, National Association member, FDIC. Well, Abe, with just about a minute to go here before the start of the second half, what we've seen tonight, a very good crowd here at Psyche Pavilion, a very active crowd, and it seems like part of that has helped to feed the Bison. They seem to be feeding off the energy and playing up to the level of the expectations of the fans here tonight. Of course, the students back with the classes starting yesterday, kind of getting back into that routine. And just in your playing days, what was that like after, okay, you've had about a month to focus on basketball and just relaxation to now get back into that groove with going to class, going to practice, and then of course going to all the games? Well, I know when I played, I really enjoyed that winter time. It was the only time that I felt like I was actually a professional basketball player. <laughs> you didn't have class, and my job was literally play ball, play ball, play ball. But when you, after a while, you kind of get up into, into a malaise. And when you see some students back, some familiar faces back, you want to put on a show for them. And that's exactly what the Bison are doing tonight. And I'll ask you kind of a little bit more along that, uh, that same notion. Did, did you feel like it was a, a routine where you got a little bit more comfortable once you got kind of back into it, or, or was it jarring at first? And maybe you were back on your heels for the first couple games because you got thrown out of what had become your routine for about a month of, again, just being able to focus on basketball and kind of being like that professional. Yeah, I mean, it definitely threw you off because you definitely had to worry about your time management. As you see, Cam Gregory getting started early, didn't really get involved that that much in the first half but he's gonna definitely try to impose his will in the second half but to touch on about what you were saying earlier it definitely throws you off but once you get back into the swing believe me it's a uh, it's all downhill from there uphill from there excuse me first PNC Bank foul shot from Cam Gregory is good he's got three points now in the game he sat on the bench for much of the first half after he picked up his second foul early on and well, that was also a big factor in Bucknell being able to go on a nice run. And Gregory off the floor and being able to kind of focus more on Walker and Jones specifically and not having to worry about that third threat of Cam Gregory being out there. Yeah, trust me, Cam Gregory wants to make sure Nana Fallon knows that he's here and he's here to stay. He's going to definitely put his effort into this first half. Fallon. Second half. Nearly having the ball knocked away through a double team. It comes up top at a whistle and a blocking foul called against Loyola here as Avi Toomer end up getting uh, obstructed by Andrew Kisteka. Second against Kisteka. The number one against Loyola here in the second half. By the way, the foul down on the one end of the floor was against Nana Fallon, and he picked up his second. So he's got to be careful here for the next few minutes. To the corner for Thomas. He has it knocked away, and will stay down with the Bison. As Jones was up close on him. to try and get it in, comes out to Brown. Hit a couple of three-pointers in the first half. Really doing a lot of double teaming here early as Thomas spinning in and he's gonna pick up an offensive foul as Jared Jones stuck in and drew the contact. Questionable call there if you ask Nate Davis. That's a move Zach Thomas does time and time again as you Ooh. see a little spin, maybe a little push off. Depends on who you ask, I guess. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see he had that, that forearm out like that, and that's a lot of times what the refs will look for. And if they see that, it's whistle more times than not. It's Cam Gregory with the spin move. He's got five. And Loyola scored the first three points here in the second half. Believe you me, Loyola is not going home without a fight. These guys want to make sure that Bucknell knows they're here to play a game and win it. Fallon trying to get it in here to Brown as Loyola into a full court press. Brown will speed it across and tripping up is Andre Walker. A little bit of an odd man situation here as Toomer tried to dump for Fallon. Wasn't home and he ends up grabbing it in the corner. Go up with a shot here after stopping his dribble, no good. Rebound Cam Gregory. So Loyola coming out strong defensively here through the night, first 90 seconds of the second half. Half-time adjustments made by G.G. Smith, at least paying dividends thus far. And off pass for Walker, stolen away by Brown. Brown forward, and that's about as easy of a layup as Stephen Brown's gonna have all night. 
You see a lot of action that Loyola likes to run. They like to do handoffs. I know Steven Brownson watching the tape took full advantage there, getting his hand in on the handoff there. And it's always hard to, to get that hand in on there because, because of just the nature of the handoff itself, it's very tough to not foul when you do that. And Brown did a great job. Absolutely. It, it's, the, it's the responsibility of the offensive player to make sure there's very little space in between the two bodies when he hands it off. Brown dumps in for Thomas. That's a nice bucket for Zach Thomas. He has 11 to lead the way for the Bison. So they're getting their feet back on them offensively, up by 21 now. What an advantage to have two guys who can be effective in the post. Walker driving in. A pass off to Jones in the high post. Goes in on Thomas. Turn around. Got it. That's his game. Catches it in the mid post. Drives, spins, hooks. This is his game. We got, got to make sure that he doesn't do that time and time again. Outside, McKenzie for three. Shot no good. Jones grabs the rebound. And if you can believe it, those were the first two points of the night for Jared Jones. A bison blanked him in the first half. This is a guy who's averaging over 16 points a game. Believe you me, he's going to try to impose his will in this second half. He'll definitely, may not get the points, but he's definitely going to have the attempts. Walker takes it inside, dumps off to Gregory, right block. There's a cutting Kosteka, and he misses the layup. It's a good job by Kosteka to get open and a nice pass to feed him, but he just couldn't finish. I know he wants to have that one back. Thomas gives off for Tumor and then the pass stolen away by Kosteka. He goes up with one hand and slams it in. Andrew Kosteka's got seven. As that time he made sure that he wasn't going to miss. Absolutely. Got to elevate and nice flush there. McKenzie kick out. Thomas for three. Got it. Thomas heating up. He's got 14. Easy rhythm jump shot there at the three-point line with a really nice feed from Stephen Brown. Bucknell lead back up to 20 as Walker trying to get Loyola back into it. Mismatch outside, guarded by Fallon. Now he passes him off to Stephen Brown. Jones spinning in on Thomas, up with a shot, no good. Good defense played by Zach Thomas, who grabs the rebound. And then after some contact, got it out to Toomer, and now a foul call. That'll bring us to a timeout. 15.34 left to go here in the second half. We'll have substitutions on both sides. It's 53-33. Bucknell on top of the Loyola Greyhounds here tonight in Lewisburg. For over 30 years, Fairfield Auto Group has had a commitment to hometown values. We know how important that is to you. There's a Fairfield dealership near you, and with 13 brands and eight locations, you'll see why customers have been loving us for 30 years. Cars cost less at Fairfield Auto Group. Bucknell up by 20, 53-33. As you take a look at some of the highlights, Zach Thomas here coming out of halftime. Five points, and the Psycho Psychos enjoying themselves tonight. It's been a good one for the Bison to come back home and try and get to 6-1 and one in Patriot League play. As, well, we were wondering which Loyola team would end up showing up, the one that ended up beating Lehigh on the road and taking down Boston University on Monday night, or the one that lost to Army and that lost to Lafayette. And at least thus far, it's looking a lot more like the Army and Lafayette team. Yeah, I get it. I guess we got to call it good Greyhounds or bad Greyhounds. And uh, tonight, so far, we've seen the bad Greyhounds, but there's still a lot of time left, and they can definitely make this a game. Yeah, certainly 15 minutes left in eternity here for the Greyhounds to come back, especially with the way that they're capable of scoring in bunches. This is Kosteka, guarded by McKenzie. They give off to Andre Walker, and Walker, another guy who's had a quiet night. He has not scored at all. Jared Jones with just two points. Walker to the basket, shot no good, but there's Kevon Scott for the tip in. And he's got a team high 11 points. And how big is that to keep those two guys basically off the score sheet all night as Bruce Moore has the bucket for Bucknell. But when you look at Walker and Jones, they have accounted for just about 50% of Loyola's scoring this season. And in Patriot League play, 
Uh, that drops down a little bit, but that's mostly because Cam Gregory's been stepping up, and they've been silent tonight offensively. Well, that's the difference in the game. You you got your two big-time players who can't put the ball in the hole. Uh, you're gonna gonna be down by a deficit of 20. But I know G.G. Smith is definitely encouraging them because they need these two guys in order to get into this game. That was Walker there missing the three. Now Sestina with a drive in for Bucknelly goes up with a shot. Got blocked, but Kevon Scott fouled him. I'll send Sestina to the line as we take another look. He's really improved his game, driving from the perimeter. There you see drawing the foul as well. That's something he wasn't able to do at this point last year, especially when he had the shoulder injury. Mm -hmm. But even prior to that, uh, he's definitely improved on making his game more versatile. See the 6'8", sophomore to the line for his first PNC Bank foul shot. But he's got three points now in the game. As, as you were mentioning Sestina, he got in a little bit of foul trouble in the first half. He's been one of the best options off the bench for the Bison this season, their leading scorer and their leading rebounder coming off the pine this year. Well, he really is a starter playing bench minutes. Uh, it's just hard to break into the game when you got guys like Zach Thomas and Nana Fallon. But this guy definitely can play. He's technically a freshman because of his injury last year. And trust me, all the Bison fans out there are going to love to see him for the next three years. Chuck Champion in the game running the point here for Loyola. That's well, Gregory in the high post. Back out to Champion. Justeka nearly had it knocked away by McKenzie. Then they work it inside. Good extra pass to find Cam Gregory, who was able to finish with authority. Great passing there by the Loyola Greyhounds. You see here, Bucknell has probably the biggest lineup that it could possibly have out here right now. Bruce Moore at the three. Uh, you got uh, Robertson at the two, and Kimball McKenzie playing the one. They're the smallest guy on the floor is 6'2". Driving forward, Langendorfer shot no good. Kick out for Champion, passes up the three, instead tries to drive, and now will back it out into a set play. G.G. Smith giving the orders out to the team as now they head into that offense with 16 to shoot. Inside for Gregory, shot no good, good defense, but then a good job on the deflection by Kavon Scott to knock it out of bounds. It'll stay though with Bucknell. I know Cam. I know Cam Gregory wanted that one back. He had a point blank shot at from the bank. From the bank, uh, just couldn't knock it down. Bison grab it back here. 12:53 left to play in the game. They enjoy a 20-point lead. Each team has scored 11 here after halftime. As Bruce Moore is going to take this one up. Loyola doing a good job making Stephen Brown work for having the ball. They know that the, every possession begins with the point guard, and they're slowing down the progression of the Bucknell Bison on offense. Foul call down on the floor, away from the play. It's going to go against Kevon Scott. Fouled not a Fallon. And for Scott, that's his third foul of the game. Fourth against Loyola here in the second half. Now Scott's got to be careful, and he's been their leading scorer tonight. And quite frankly, he's been pretty impressive for Loyola. He absolutely has, Joe. He scored 14 points, season high earlier this year. He's got a pretty good athletic background as Brown drives in, has his shot blocked, but it goes right to Sestina who misses. DJ McClay now down low with a pump fake, had some room. That shot didn't go. And then it goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with Bucknell. The level of athleticism in this game is uh, something to, to really watch. you got guys playing above the rim, blocking shots like the one we just saw there. What an amazing play defensively. Yeah, Scott came up with the big block and now out of the inbound to Sestina in the corner. Drive of the baseline, kick up top, Brown for three, got it. <laughs> Steven Brown with 13 points. Steven Brown is making them pay for not guarding him knocking down three three-pointers tonight. Bucknell up by 23. To stack it with the screen. Gives it out to Scott. Nice steal by Ben Robertson. Driving forward to the basket. Robertson gets the foul and one. The freshman from High Point, North Carolina, heads to the line. And he'll try for a three-point play 
after this. Bucknell 62 and Loyola 37 with 11.43 left to go. Well, as we head into the fourth week of Patriot League play, the standings are starting to tighten. As the guys mentioned before, Bucknell is on top of the Patriot League standings, but they have a tough stretch of their schedule coming up. We'll take a look at that right now. Their next game is this Saturday at home against Boston University. They then hit the road to Lafayette, home again for Army, American, and Holy Cross. Then they end the season with Lehigh and Colgate, two good programs. So they'll need to play their best basketball down this stretch, guys. Thank you very much, Aaron. Is again the Bison hitting their stride here in Patriot League play? They've won, well, five out of their first six contests so far, and appear to be on their way to number six. As you take a look again at some of the big plays in his second half, athleticism, length, speed—that's what you're seeing in, the, in today's game. And Coach Nate Davis has definitely recruited all those different types of attributes in his players. See Nate Davis, it's Ben Robertson, freshman to the free throw line to try and complete a three point play here out of the timeout. And he is short on the first free throw, doesn't even hit the rim and just goes right out of bounds. It'll be Loyola ball as Robertson has only been to the free throw line five times this season. Well, you can. Big you smile though after that one. I am certain he will hear about that one in the locker room. Gonna let him forget about that one for a long time. This is Langendorfer driving the baseline and a nice reverse layup. Set play there by Gigi Smith, taking advantage of the aggressiveness defensively by Avi Toomer. Here's Thomas giving for Robertson. Started a drive and now we'll back it back out. Now it's Toomer. It's been quiet in the second half. He goes up with a shot, no good on the layup. Rebound Langendorfer and ahead for champion. Langendorfer gets it back, stripped out of his hands. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Loyola. Langendorfer really is what I would like to call a glue guy. He does all the right things. That's why he gets minutes on the floor. This la these last two possessions, you saw him with the nice backdoor play and getting the steal and leading the break as well. Expect to see a lot more of him out on the floor here in this second half with Jared Jones having three fouls against him. There's James Fives from in front of the free throw line knocking it down. Tough shot there by James Fives, driving left, fade away, and hanging with a nice finish. Brown over for Robertson. Now again for Toomer, guarded outside by Langendorf for a little bit of a size mismatch there for Loyola. Got to get in for DJ McClay, and they call a three-second violation against him. Yeah, he was camping out in there. He, uh, he thought he was open, and uh, just didn't get the ball. Uh, lesson for big guys, if you don't get the ball in there inside, Get out, come back in, repost. Nothing wrong with that. Was that a pet peeve of yours back in the day? Robertson with another steal to the basket, and he slams it home. Oh, ho, ho. What an athletic play by Robertson. I'm telling you, Bison have some athletes in these younger classes. Guys like Bruce Moore, Robertson, Javi Toomer. The future is looking bright for the Bison. How about that dunk? Fives pass stolen by McClay. Now Brown ahead for Thomas with a pump fake in the bucket. Good. Nothing flashy for Zach Thomas that time. Just solid fundamentals. Two points is two points. I'm sure that's what Zach Thomas is going to say when they rewatch this tape. Bison back up by 25. Champions pass tip nearly stolen by Robertson as he's becoming active in going after those steals. Absolutely. It's contagious. It really is when you see a guy like Avi Toomer who started the game out getting in the passing lanes. And then Ben Robertson with the dunk. My, oh, my. Wish I had those kind of legs. 6'5 <laughs> freshman from High Point, North Carolina, coming off the floor and getting a nice ovation from the Soika crowd. Bucknell up by 25. This Novell Provo controls for Loyola. Trying to get something going. Langendorfer for three. No good off the window. Brown back across and looks to drive in. Stops, dumps down to Fallon, and Fallon 
gets fouled. He'll head to the free throw line for two PNC Bank foul shots. This is a game that Stephen Brown can literally do whatever he wanted. He saw all his options there, made a really unselfish play because I thought he had a layup, gave it up to his big guy. Now we're going to see him try to knock down two at the line. It's the third foul against Gregory in the game now. As the first from Fallon is good. Now three of four from the free throw line today. Fallon now with nine points in the contest. Remember, picked up his thousandth point earlier in the game in case you missed it. I mean, the 40th Bison player ever to get to that mark as he hits the second PNC Bank foul shot to get into double figures. Three Bison with 10 points or more. Drive it a dump off by Sam Norton. Tip, then he picked it back up outside. Provo pulls up for three, shot no good. And the rebound hits off the hands of Andrew Kosteka and goes out of bounds. I think when Gigi Smith and the Loyola Greyhounds watch this game again. Long pass ahead for Toomer, who gets fouled going up by Gregory, who's going to pick up his fourth foul. I think when they watch this game, they're going to look at all the times and all the opportunities they had to score. And then the lack of days ago plays like you just saw right there, letting Navi Toomer ahead of the defense. And now he's at the line for a potential two points. Toomer back shooting a couple of PNC Bank foul shots. 33% from the line this season. No good on the first. Toomer had eight points all coming in the first half. and Just trying to get things going now from the charity stripe. So Bucknell up by 27 at this point. You still don't want to fall off from the free throw line. Second from Toomer is good. It's kind of at this point in the game where you, you want to make sure you're working on those fundamentals and shoring up some of the weak points in your game and using it almost like an opportunity to make sure that you don't fall back and allow Loyola back into this game. Believe it or not, one of the hardest things to do in coaching is to make sure your team doesn't fall into bad habits when they're up in a game like this. As you saw there, giving up a layup to Barnard. Um, this is the type of game where you could easily get into bad habits because everything's coming so easily to you. And how, as a player, do you avoid doing that in a game as Toomer is off the mark on a three? You have to stay true to the game plan. Uh, Bison always want to make sure they play inside out, stay disciplined defensively. They're doing that, but we've seen at times today that they haven't followed the game plan, and Loyola's taking full advantage of it. Kostek on the elbows, stops his dribble, kick out, Walker for three, he got it, and those are the first three points of the night for Andre Walker, who he had 35 on Monday against Boston University. It wasn't a matter of if, it was just a matter of when with Andre Walker. This guy can flat out shoot it. Best shooter on the team by far. Averaging 16 points a game coming into the game today. Dump it inside for Fallon, puts it on the floor once, spin move, hook shot, doesn't go. Thomas couldn't get the bucket. Now Walker ahead. Got a mismatch on him there. It's Fallon working on him on the outside, the big man against the point guard. They dump it in. And Kevon Scott able to draw a foul against Avi Toomer. Not characteristic of the Bison to switch. And you see here, took full advantage of it here. 69-46, timeout on the floor. Back with more after this. This is Bucknell's men's basketball on MyTV WQMY. Presented by Wyoming Seminary and Fairfield Auto Group. Bucknell cheerleaders welcoming us back as Wyoming Seminary was voted the number one private school in northeastern Pennsylvania for grades toddler through 12 and postgraduate. Sem has it all, challenging academics, diverse arts, championship athletics, and activities for every interest, and has both local and boarding students from all over the world. Call or visit today. Bucknell up 69-46 on the Loyola Greyhounds as Gavon Scott heads to the free throw line out of the timeout as uh, the Bison 
still needing to play strong here and not allow Loyola to come back because again, they're, they're a team that has gone on some nice runs and well, they've come up with a couple of shocking wins as a result of those. Vaughn Scott's first PNC Bank foul shot, no good. You don't want to get a team like Loyola with a lot with going into a, any kind of timeout or a, a situation in the game with confidence. At this point, you want to absolutely kill their confidence. Second from Scott does go down, so Bucknell's lead trimmed to 22. Has been as big as 25 in a game. As they beat Lehigh on the road earlier this season on a last second buzzer beater from Andre Walker. Ballin has it ripped from his hands by Sam Norton. And now the other way for Loyola. Walker also had a buzzer beater against Stony Brook, an NCAA tournament team from a year ago in non-conference action to give Loyola a 71-70 victory on the road. A team that played a strong non-conference schedule and came away with some big wins. Yeah, uh, beating Fairfield, Stony Brook, Mount St. Mary's, Binghamton, UMass Lowell. Not a bad resume. Stecco gets the bucket to go. He has nine points, 69-49. Loyola starting to work their way back into this game slowly but surely as Sestina will give off to Avi Toomer. Greyhound's team is just feisty after their namesake animal almost. is nearly a turnover there for Bucknell as Stephen Brown went and grabbed it back towards the timeline. You see here Loyola picking up their defensive intensity. O'Reilly for three, swirls out, rebound to Fallon, and then he gets fouled on the way back up. Pick it up as the foul goes against Loyola. They catch Kavon Scott, I believe. Yeah, it is going to go against Scott. That's number three against him. Loyola's only chance of getting back into this game is to create turnovers. As you're looking uh, right now, you're seeing a lot of traps double teams, people coming from the weak side, the strong side. Gigi Smith is throwing the whole kitchen sink right now, trying to get something that'll work to try to cut into this, uh, this deficit that they have. So Nana, they missed the first PNC Bank foul shot, the second. <laughs> Abel's to connect on it, he has 11 points and now he'll head off the floor, replaced by DJ McClay. They get a look at head coach Nate Davis just off to our left on your screen, John Griffin, one of the assistant coaches, the former Bucknell player in his own right, 1,000 point score. The former teammate of yours, Abe. Yeah, John Griffin was a guy who never saw a shot he didn't like, I tell you that much, but uh, definitely could knock him down when he was open. It was a big part of those teams about a dozen years ago or so, they made a couple of memorable NCAA tournament appearances. Our side, Kostaka. Gives up for Walker. Of course, they were one of the key cogs on those teams as well as Walker knocks down a three right in front of his own bench. Got six points here in short order now. Lead down to 18. That's, a, that's not a good sign for the Bison. Andre Walker starting to get a little bit more confidence and daylight from that three-point line. You be believe you me, viewers at home, this guy can light it up. McClay, no good on the three. Now Walker nearly has it poked away by Brown. Now he gets it back, launching a deep three, and the shot no good. Rebound tips to Nate Sestina. So I wanted to ask Gabe, and figure since we're towards the end of game number three here, it's 2005, you've won the Patriot League tournament, you're going into the NCAA tournament as the 14 seed, and you see that you've drawn Kansas. What is the mood <laughs> going into that game, and how are you feeling, how is the team feeling, kind of heading into that game, and at what point did you realize in action, as the ball gets tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with Bucknell, that, you know what, we've got a real chance at upsetting here. Well, I tell you, all the confidence really comes from the coach. And Coach Patrick Flannery, I, I tell you, was one of the guys who was the ultimate detailed-oriented person. But he made sure we were prepared for everything Kansas had to throw at us. And uh, it all really started at, at the on the practice court. And um, day in and day out, all those habits that we built up that whole year kind of came into fruition because uh, our game plan was feed the big guys, Chris McNaughton, and make sure Charles Lee and Kevin Bencourt get shots, and then me just don't turn the ball over. That's what <laughs> coaches always, always tell me. <laughs> just 
just don't turn the ball over. And of course, it was Chris McNaughton who had the game-winning shot, a little turnaround from inside right in the final seconds of that game. It's Cam Gregory here for Loyola. Picks up a foul as Zach Thomas hacked him on the arm as he was spinning in. And of course, I, I think a part of that year that a lot of people maybe forget just because y you think about that game in the scheme of one of the all-time great bracket busters, but also earlier that year, they ended up beating Pittsburgh, who at the time was the number seven team in the country, which did that kind of, having that in your back pocket, did, did that give you some confidence going into that game? Absolutely. When you beat uh, the teams that you see on TV that are ranked in the top 25 uh, week in and week out, it definitely gives you that confidence going into the game, believing, hey, I can, we can take anybody out here on the floor. At the end of the day, it's our style versus your style, our players versus your players, and we were a really confident team uh, all from the top to the bottom. Uh, we had guys like Donald Brown who were freak athletes. We had guys who were technicians like Chris Neese who could knock down three-point shots and uh, John Griffin, and then we had guys who were bruisers and were really, really tough, like Darren Mastropolo. So I think we had a really, really good combination of te technique and heart and toughness, and uh, it really, and obviously the great coaching as well. It's Kimball McKenzie stepping out, knocking down a three. Of course, Nate Davis was the top assistant under Pat Flannery on that team. Now, of course, the head coach after he left for a, a six-year stint in his alma mater at Randolph-Macon where he made the NCAA tournament at the Division III level six straight years, now back here. But of course, he was also around for the next year as you take a look at the McKenzie three, which the Bison, now you were no longer the scrappy underdog. You were kind of the, uh, the top dog with the target on your back, finishing the season in the top 25, grabbing a nine seed in the tournament and uh, Oh, being the only team in Patriot League history to have a perfect record in conference play. It's a big difference when you're going from the hunter to the hunted. Mm -hmm. That was something that we always used to write on the board each and every day. And, uh, and that certainly was something that carried forward in what's been a, a great 12-year run for the program. We take a timeout, 73-52, Bucknell on top. Wyoming Seminary was voted the number one private school in Northeastern Pennsylvania for grads toddler through 12 and postgraduate. SEM has it all, challenging academics, diverse arts, championship athletics, activities for every interest, and as both local and boarding students from all over the world. Call or visit today. The Bucknell Bison lead it by 21, 73-52, with 343 remaining here at Soika Pavilion. Alongside former Bucknell point guard Abe Badmus, my name is Joe Vasile, and thank you for joining us here tonight. Aaron Dugan doing a great job over on the sidelines uh, tonight as well. Loyola takes it here out of the timeout. Down from Thomas as you take a look at some of his numbers. A double-double, 16 points, 10 rebounds, three assists for the power forward for the Bison. He's really come into his own this year. Just another day at the at the uh, on the court for Zach Thomas doing things we know he can do. Walker driving in, ends up throwing a layup off the bottom of the rim. And taken now by the Bison, who will try and slow things down. And just tick some time off the clock here. Putting up 73 points right around their season average, still with over three minutes left to play. And you got to imagine here, Abe, that this is a game that the Bison can really feel good about, not only because of all the different Guys who have stepped up, the Avi Toomers of the world, Kimball McKenzie with 11 as part of a crew of four Bison players in double figures so far, but because you wanted to come back home, have a good showing in front of a nice crowd, and you were able to do that. Absolutely. Believe, take, make no mistake about it. This, this was a game that Bucknell wanted. Uh, Loyola Maryland went out and beat Boston, the number mm -hmm. one team in the league, and uh, they were the talk of the Patriot League. Yep. Bucknell had something to say about it, and they really showed out today. And Loyola came into this game with a 9-8 and eight overall record, 3-3 three and three in Patriot League play. Last year, they won nine games all season. McKenzie, air malls a floater. It's taken here by Loyola. Walker spinning in. Shot doesn't go down. That's been the story of the night for him. And then James Fives gets fouled. Got smacked on his way up, so he'll head to the line for a couple of PNC Bank foul shots with just under two and a half minutes left to go in this game. And 
Yeah, we talked a little bit about the upcoming schedule for the Bison after this game and kind of what you have to keep in mind moving forward. Be back in action this Saturday against, uh, pardon me, Boston University, a tough team that is uh, taking on Navy tonight. And I know they were tied at halftime, haven't seen a score update since then. Spives misses his first PNC Bank foul shot. But it doesn't get any easier from here on out for the Bison. It absolutely doesn't. Every team knows your plays. They know your calls. They know your defensive adjustments that you're going to make. The, jo the job that you have to do is execute. Uh, in the Patriot League, there's definitely a malaise. But uh, when you play teams that know you so well year after year, uh, ex it always comes down to execution. Fives was able to hit on the second. He has four points. As Nate Sestina will check in here for Nana Fallon, who will come off to a nice ovation for the fans with 224 remaining. John Azanero also checked back into the game for Bucknell. We saw him a little bit in the first half. Ground guarded by Stobby on his way up the floor. He's able to speed it across. Had a tumor who, again, with nine points today and handful of steals. I believe he's officially recorded with two, but boy, he's played so good defensively with those deflections, and especially in that first half. Like you said, Joe, he only has two steals in the stat sheet, but I, believe it or not, he was responsible for over 10 defensive mm -hmm. possessions on the defensive end, and uh, he is really coming into his own tonight. And like you said, him being a big part of the future of this team, Tonight, just another night that kind of shows that things are bright for Bucknell as he's going to pick up a foul here as Sam Norton drives in and gets a bucket. You see the timely fadeaway jump shot by, by Zach Thomas. He uh, really is coming into his own tonight as well. Slumping a little the last few games. It's good to see him rebound and uh, really show his dominance in a Patriot League game. Nearly a full hockey line change for the Bison. Matt O'Reilly, DJ McClay, Nate Sestina, Ben Robertson all check into the game. As an arrow will stay out as Langendorfer goes up with a shot for Loyola and knocks it down. Ian Langendorfer with six points, a new career high for the freshman. Bucknell still up 75-59. Now Sestina driving in. He's able to draw a blocking foul. And perhaps one of the Probably even one of the most promising things for Bucknell moving forward is that both Thomas and Fallon, both juniors, you've got them for another year, plus an extra year of some of these other guys ending up uh, developing here is, of course, in addition to all the choices we offer you, buying a new or used vehicle from one of our dealerships affords you amazing benefits too. When you buy a car from Fairfield Auto Group, you get the Fairfield Advantage. It's definitely a scary thought for the rest of the Patriot League that you got guys like uh, Nana Fallon and Stephen Brown coming back for one more year. Uh, and then you got the really quick athletic lineup that Bruce Moore, uh, Ben Robertson bring to the table. Um, it is really going to be fun to watch the Bison for the next few years. Nate Sestina was good on his first PNC Bank foul shot, off on the second, and then a foul was called against Ben Robertson. It's going to send it down to the other end. Four shots, that's first against Robertson. As, yeah, you look at this Bison team, the only seniors on the team are DJ McClay, John Azanero, and Ben Oberfeld, who's been out with the year with an injury. Other than that, everyone is junior, sophomore, freshman. And again, that's got to strike some fear across the Patriot League. Absolutely. And then you also got to think the expectation is there as well. So it's incumbent upon uh, a lot of these underclassmen and the guys who are going to be seniors to make sure that they may have a great summer. Sam Norton good on the first. And at Bucknell, there's only one way to gear up for college at prices any bison can appreciate. Shop at Office Depot Office Max, the official office product supplier for Bucknell Athletics. Second free throw was good from Norton. Now the bison will take it here with a minute 15 left to play and a 15-point lead. Loyal has come back a little bit, but... It's been uh, mostly because the Bison have kind of taken the foot off the gas a little bit offensively and defensively. Yeah, this game was won in the first half. Uh, the scoring has been pretty even in the second, but uh, the Bison really won this game in the first half with their energy, effort, and uh, really attention to detail on the defensive end. 
inside a minute to go as Loyola takes it back. Reversal to the far side for Sam Norton, a sophomore from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Now working it inside, and there's Ian Langendorf for to finish. He has eight. He's played some strong minutes for Loyola. He sure has. He's a up-and-coming freshman who uh, I think is going to have a bright future for Loyola. This is John Azanero with it. Now to Bruce Moore, just again winding time off the clock. Are the Bison pass tipped by Matt Stobby out of bounds? We'll stay with Bucknell. About a nine second deferential shot clock to game clock, so the Greyhounds will get it back one more time here after the Bucknell possession. O'Reilly, just Razanero back to the timeline, now inside 20 seconds to play. Double teamed, Razanero, pass to the corner, O'Reilly stepped out of bounds. It'll go down the other way as Loyola will take it, 13.4 seconds to go. Trailing by 13, and the shot clock turned off here, Abe. Yeah, it's uh, been a great showing for the Bison. Uh, like I said earlier, this first half was the difference. The defensive effort and attention to detail uh, was something to really watch if, uh, for the viewers at home that didn't watch that first half. Turnaround three from Gorski just goes out of bounds, and that will do it here tonight from Soika Pavilion. The Bucknell Bison defeat the Loyola Greyhounds 76-63. The Bison improved to 14-6 and 6-1 and six and in Patriot League play. Aaron Dugan will be standing by with our players of the game right on the other side of this break. This is Bucknell's men's basketball on MyTV WQMY. Presented by Wyoming Seminary and Fairfield Auto Group. We now send it down to the court where Aaron Dugan is standing by with Bucknell men's basketball head coach, Nate Davis. Aaron? Well, coach, a complete team effort today, offensively, defensively, all facets of the game really working. Got to be very happy right now. Yeah, I thought we did a lot of good things. Obviously, early on, to jump out to a 20-point lead at half means we're doing some things right. I thought our defensive intensity was good. I thought after the first few minutes, we started taking care of the ball and got good shots, and we're able to, 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 to beat a team that's got some quality wins. We got to do a little better at the end of the in the second half there, so they don't cut it into the lead like that. But we certainly did a lot of good things tonight. Loyola really pushing the ball out, forcing your shooters to take shots from far out, but they're really getting it done tonight. Yeah, I mean they're aggressive defensively. We knew our strength of our team is to drive the ball anyway. Um, we were able to get in the lane and get some good looks from the perimeter because of it. So talk to me about this stretch of the season coming up. A lot of important games. Where are your heads at right now? Well, I think it's, I know it's coach talk, but you can only worry about the one you have to play. And so we talked about playing the best we could tonight, being the best team we can be tonight. We'll get in here tomorrow and work on getting ready for Saturday. You can't worry about what's going on down the road. You don't want to worry about what other people in the league are doing. You worry about yourself and trying to continue to improve. Coach, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, let's move on to one of our players of the game, Stephen Brown. Great job tonight. Taking some shots from the perimeter tonight. You were really feeling it out there. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of stops. You know, that was our main focus is getting stops and getting out in transition. Uh, we like to pick up the pace a lot, so I mean, uh, our defense really helped our offense a lot early on. We struggled with the turnovers, but once we started getting stops and getting on position, it made it a lot easier um, to score. You're now 6-1 and one in Patriot League play. Is this right where you want to be? Yeah, I mean, exactly where we wanted to be. Um, you know, we take one game at a time. You know, we focus today and, you know, focus on practice tomorrow. You know, we've been in this position before. We just got to stay consistent throughout the whole season. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next player of the game, Zach Thomas, a complete team effort tonight. What can you say about your offense and your defense tonight? Um, well, in the first half, we had it, we had it going. I think we shot like 70% or something like that. And uh, we got a lot of people that can score, so we just uh, passed the ball around to whoever was open, and uh, we kept on getting stops, and, uh, and that really helped us get a lead. Zach, a great atmosphere here tonight. Some of the student section really filling in. How much does that help you? Oh, it helps a lot. It gets our energy going. Um, and to be able to come off the uh, good starts like that helps us and uh, makes it a lot easier to win. Talk to me about this stretch coming up. You're six and one now in the Patriot League. Where would you like to be? Um, well, we want to win every game we come out and play. We're, we were disappointed we lost the home game to Lehigh here. Um, but going forward, we just want to uh, continue uh, playing good defense, good offense, and hopefully that will translate to more wins. Right. Thanks. Great job. Thank you very much. Joe? Well, thank you very much, Aaron. We appreciate your work and some great words there from both Nate Davis, Stephen Brown, Zach Thomas, and now for Abe Badmus. Any final thoughts on tonight's win, 76-63 over Loyola? The difference in the game was really the defensive end. 
Uh, when you commit to that end, everything else opens up. You saw Zach say earlier they shot 70% from the field in the first half. That's all the result of layups, easy buckets, steals, deflections. That kind of stuff is contagious, and you see everybody ate tonight. This broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Bucknell Sports Properties and Bucknell University. Rebroadcast, retransmission, or any other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of BSB is prohibited. And so for the Fox 56 WQMY sports crew, doing a great job as always, my partner, Abe Badmus, and everyone here at Bucknell University. My name is Joe Seal, the Bison, roll. 76-63 over Loyola. Next game Saturday here on QMY as Bucknell hosts Boston University. So long tonight from Lewisburg. The Bison win it once again in her 6-1 and one in Patriot League play. This is Bucknell's men's basketball on Mike TV WQMY, presented by Wyoming Seminary and Fairfield Auto Group.